I recently did a menswear inspired shop your closet video. I will leave that up here for you. But while I was doing research for that video, I found a lot of parallels between slow fashion principles and guides and just styling traditional menswear. And I thought this would be a good refresher to kind of take some of those slow fashion principles that I found occurring in sort of the traditional menswear space and apply them to us, to me, to slow fashion in general, because I thought there were some really good learnings. If you've been around the channel for a while, most of them probably won't be so new to you, but I just thought it was really interesting, those parallels, and it's always good to have a refresher, you know? So let's get into it. The first tip is all about finding a really good seamstress or tailor and know how you want your clothes to fit. I personally think fit is one of the most important ingredients in a really solid outfit and solid personal style in general. And I think it's important to remember that everyone has different preferences in terms of how their clothes fit. So it's figuring out where you land on the spectrum of, you know, super tight fitted versus oversized and making that work for you and getting your clothing adjusted or altered to make sure that your clothes fit you in a way that you like. And just that they fall and work for your body in general. Not only will you feel and look better in your clothes, but you look a lot more expensive. Like there's something really luxurious looking about clothing that fits you and falls on you in a way that really suits you, your body, your style, all that jazz. I also noticed a really big focus on texture and fabric choice, particularly choosing the right fabric for the different seasons. You know, in traditional menswear suiting, we see different wool blends, we see linen, we see seersucker, we see all of these really practical fabrics for the required season. And I think now with fast fashion, there are more synthetics being introduced into the menswear space, but not as much as with traditional women's wear. So for me, what I took from this was paying attention to two really important factors when it comes to fabric choice. Number one is understand what fabrics work best for your body, your internal temperature, and your climate. And number two is when you're purchasing a new garment or secondhand, and whatever, make sure that the fabric makes sense for the purpose of the garment. I think if we're looking at summer dresses, for example, things like linen, cotton, blends of these two fabrics, seersucker, I think it's really important that's aligned with the seasonality of the garment. Why are we buying synthetics that don't breathe, that are super tight to the body when we know it's gonna be like super hot outside? Why? Like that makes no sense. So bringing back the focus to fabric choice, I think can be really helpful when you're building a closet of slow fashion choices that you really wanna wear over and over again. I think this is becoming less the case now, but menswear trend cycles are a little bit longer than women's. They tend to run over years versus seasons. And I think because of this, the offerings in menswear are just a lot more, let's just say more simple, timeless and versatile. And I think because of this, there is often more attention that is allowed to be paid to small details in an overall outfit. Things like belts, even down to like choosing a texture of belt and the belt buckle. Things like pocket squares, silk scarves, cufflinks, accessories like watches and socks. And I think in traditional women's wear, it's easy to forget how important these details are and how game changing they can be in an outfit. But take that approach to not overlooking the small details in an outfit because they really can add a more stylized look, like they can make your outfit feel a little bit more styled, more lived in, more put together. And just like there's been more thought put into the outfit. This is less about sort of the menswear aesthetic piece 
and more just an interesting fact that I found out when I was doing research for that last video. And that is that men primarily shop with comfort and how much they actually like a garment in mind first. So they tend to figure out what it is they like and stick to it year over year and like slightly make adjustments depending on trends and seasons and whatever. They often find we are subjected to so much more pressure to look a certain way or to partake in certain trends. Perhaps if we kind of shift the narrative in our minds to shopping for us, first and foremost, what we like aesthetically, what feels good, what we think looks great on us, and what's comfortable. This seems so simple, but I think it's very easy to get caught up in trends and especially with social, like, you know, you see something on someone and you just love it. It's hard to not compare and want to be part of a certain style that is happening. But perhaps if we disassociate the emotion from our shopping, and be a little bit more pragmatic about it, I do think we can make some really solid shopping choices that will last longer in our wardrobes and that will lead to more wardrobe satisfaction. That is what I have for you today. A quick and easy one, I hope. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or if you learned something new, hit subscribe if you haven't already. You can also find me in my podcast that I do with Christina and Sina. I will leave their channels and our podcast in the description box below. We would love to see you over wherever you listen to your podcast, but we also have a YouTube channel, which is fun. We just post the episode up on YouTube. So however you like to listen or watch your podcasts, we're there. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you are still here, thank you for being here every Sunday. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful week ahead, and I will be back in the next slow fashion video. Ciao.